Thanks for watching. In this video, we will cover the Sierra Wireless LX40. We will cover what comes in the box, walk you through the device covering all of its ports and connectors, and go through the functionality of the LED lights. Let's get started by covering what comes in the box. To power the device, a DC power cable is provided. One of the pins, pin 4 in the upper left, can also be used as an input output pin. There is a ground cable that helps to keep the device safe. To assist you with getting started, a quick start guide is provided. It covers how to set up the device, including how to insert the SIM card to gain cellular connectivity. To do this, remove the SIM door using a screwdriver. Insert the SIM card that is provided by your carrier or cellular provider. After doing so, reattach the door to keep out unwanted dust or moisture. The final thing we'll cover in this section is how to mount the device. A mounting bracket is sold separately to help you with this. If you are using the device in a high vibration environment, you can further secure the router to the mounting bracket using nylon cable ties. Starting from the left, there is a mini USB port. This port can be ideal for connecting many devices, but as I always say, it is not usually ideal for a mobile or highly vibrational environment due to its lack of a locking mechanism. Next is the power connector. As we mentioned earlier, one of the pins may also be used for input-output readings. There is a reset button to help when the device is not functioning as desired. We will cover later on how the LED lights are used to help you with this process. To protect the device, a grounding screw is provided. To enable blazing fast connectivity, there is a gigabit Ethernet port for you to use. In addition, this device supports Power Over Ethernet, or PoE. This is ideal for powering devices and placing them in areas where traditional power sources are not available. An Ethernet cable needs to be connected to a compatible network switch or router that can provide power. The last thing we'll cover are the antenna ports, of which there are three. There are two cellular antennas and one for Wi-Fi. You should always use two cellular antennas in any deployment to maximize your coverage and your performance. There are four LED lights on the LX40 to provide you with some very valuable information. Starting from the right, there is a power light. Off means there is no power or insufficient power. Solid green means that sufficient power is present. Solid red means that the device is currently in standby mode, while solid amber means the device is entering into a low power mode or system low level boot. As mentioned earlier, the power light may also flash in conjunction with the pressing of the reset button. When you press the reset button for less than 5 seconds, a flashing green light will indicate when to release the button to reboot the router. Flashing red occurs when you are pressing the reset button for between 5 and 20 seconds and it is to indicate when to release the button to return the device into its factory default mode. Finally, a flashing amber light will occur when you hold the reset button for more than 20 seconds, and this tells you when to release the button to put the device into recovery mode. The second light is the activity light. Flashing green means that traffic is being sent over the WAN interface, while flashing red indicates that traffic is being sent over the serial port. If both ports are being used at the same time, the light will flash amber. The signal light is next, and it indicates the level of cellular signal you have. Solid green is what you want, as it means a good signal, like having 3 to 5 bars on your phone. Solid amber is okay, as it means a fair signal, more like 2 bars on your phone. Flashing amber is a low signal warning, as like having only one bar on your phone, and you should consider moving the device to an area of better coverage or using a more powerful antenna setup. You never want to see flashing red, as this indicates inadequate signal, or like having zero bars on your phone. The final LED light is for network. Solid green indicates you are currently connected to an LTE network, while solid amber means you are connected to a 2 or 3G network. If it's flashing green, that means you're trying to connect to the network. There is also a second occurrence of flashing green, this time being 3 seconds on, 1 off, to indicate you're using WAN over Wi-Fi or Wi-Fi client mode. Flashing red indicates that no network is available at all. Finally, you might see it alternate between flashing red and flashing amber. 
This tells you the network operating switching is enabled, but the router cannot find its required firmware. There are several occasions when all the LED lights will work in unison to alert you to an occurrence. This is known as an LED chase. A green LED chase tells you the radio module configuration or firmware update is in place, or network operating switching is in progress. An amber LED chase indicates the ALIO software update is in progress. When the update is complete, the lights will turn to solid amber. Finally, a red LED chase indicates the device is in recovery mode. The last LED lights on the router we'll cover are the Ethernet LED lights. The left light is for connection speed. Solid green means blazing fast, 1 gigabit per second, while off means you're currently at 10 100 megabit per second. The right light is for activity. There are three different states that are possible. Solid means that the link has been established, while blinking amber means that there's activity across the port. If the light is off, there is no link established. Many thanks for taking time to watch this video. It is one of many that we have in our Gateway series on our YouTube page. We look forward to hearing from you. Please reach out to us using one of the contact methods on the screen.